Coverage Channel 8, keeping you informed on events in your community. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the city clerk please take roll? Yes, Wanda Sang. Here. Joe DeMott. Here. Joyce J. Here. Davis Reinhardt. Here. Mike Stites. Here. Tracy Langworthy. Here. Karen Adams here. and Karen Berry. Here. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of February 22nd, 2010? So moved. Second. We have a motion for approval, second by Council Member Sang. Changes to the minutes? Uh, yeah, I actually have one. Give me a second. Oh, go ahead and turn your mic on. I believe uh, the, I was, I, I don't agree with the language I was quoted on and uh, now see if I can put my, I taped it and then I lost the, the page. Under uh, on page three, under uh, motion by Mr. Mr. Reinhardt to approve case number, the the reason that um, I made that motion was because I believed it met four of the seven criteria uh, for a variance, as opposed to the way the fit the way the language is written in this in this. So okay. I'd like to amend okay, that. So your language is, was to w removing three of the. Reasons not to is that what Jim, you're saying? They're actually no. What, I, what I'm saying is, if is that the my motion was that the uh, that the project met four of the seven applicable variance criteria and therefore should have been uh, okay should have been approved. Change noted. In case we have a motion for approval with some changes, please call the council on the amended mi uh, minutes. Motion carries eight to zero. Uh, thank you. We have some proclamations tonight, and I see that uh, Chief Brennan, Mr. Kettleson, has arrived. I have Randy Kettleson, uh, Heather Geyer, and uh, Matt Cromer from Principal at Pennington Elementary. Step forward, please. Mayor and City Council, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity tonight to uh, recognize Randy Kettleson for his work uh, with the students in the school administration at Pennington Elementary. Uh, this award was submitted by the school resource officer at Pennington Elementary, uh, Heather Kendall. For close to 10 years, Randy Kettleson has been a silent contributor to the safety and well-being of many of the students at Pennington Elementary School. Randy is the owner of Kettleson Campers, and throughout the years, Kettleson Campers has been the designated off-site evacuation location for the school, students, and staff. School students and staff uh, practice their off-site evacuation procedures by walking to Kettleson Campers and assembling in the business showroom. For many years, the children have walked up Independence Street along the frontage road and then into the Kettleson showroom. Although this procedure works well, an added safety concern was realized with over 200 elementary school-aged children walking down a very busy Independence Street and I-70 frontage road. Last year, the school approached uh, Randy with regard to installing a gate between the Pennington Elementary School property and Kettleson Campers. 
Randy was more than happy to oblige. Now the students of Pennington Elementary no longer have to walk along a busy street to reach their off-site evacuation location. His dedication to this community has distinguished him and is very visible each year when the eva evacuation exercises take place. Randy has not only opened up his showroom floor to over 200 elementary school-aged children, but he's also involved his employees in guiding the children to the showroom safely and in an orderly fashion. Afterwards, Randy can be seen congratulating students on a job well done, praising them for their quiet and orderly behavior, and even giving, giving, giving students high fives as they leave Kettleson campers to return back to school. I think deep down that he hopes they return someday to buy a Coleman camper. <laughs> Randy, your commitment to the safety of these children is heartfelt and visible through your interactions with the Pennington community. Your willingness to participate in the events that improve the safety of the students show that you have the qualities highly recognized by the Wheat Ridge Police Department for citizen involvement and action when you easily could not have uh, cooperated. The department would like to recognize you with a citizen award in the Wheat Ridge Police Department ceremonial coin, and to present the award will be Mayor, Mayor Jerry DeTulio. Thank you very much to the city of Wheat Ridge and to the, uh, the police officers who are always uh, so responsive to all of our needs in the community. Uh, we're proud of Pennington as being one of our neighborhood schools and uh, the kids are awesome citizens of Wheat Ridge and we're happy to just be a part of anything that involves their safety and, uh, and their well-being in, in the community. So thank you all for this very much. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Wheatridge to please come forward to read some proclamations tonight. And our first proclamation is Live Strong Day at Weaver Cyclery. We have a person here to uh, speak on it and accept the proclamation. Mr. Ron Kiefel, please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council, citizens of Wheatridge, good evening. Whereas by your commitment to take part in this bike ride event, you have joined the fight to help support the 28 million people around the world living with cancer. Whereas by showing your support toward helping Lance Armstrong's Live Strong Foundation raise $13 million in 2010 alone, it is done through grassroots events like Live Strong Day at Wheat Ridge Cyclery. And whereas every one of us can help, as every one of you participating in this event have shown his or her willingness to pitch in and give people the resources and support they need to fight cancer head on. Therefore, I, Mayor Jerry DeTulio, salute your efforts, support your cause, and applaud your, gener applaud your generous contribution to the Lance Armstrong Live Strong Foundation in your honor and in recognition of your dedication to help the fight against this terrible disease. I hereby declare March 27, 2010 as Live Strong Day in the city of Wheat Ridge then and resolved this 8th day of March, 2010. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank you for uh, your support in this. We have a bike ride leaving the uh, bike shop on the 27th. So uh, if you'd like to join us, you know, for the recreational enthusiasts, we're going to go out there and put in some miles. Um, just on a personal note, um, I was a teammate with Lance when he first started race. He was a little pup, and I was the older guy on the team. But uh, we're really excited that uh, we can support the foundation. And I have Rich Easton here, from, uh, who's the gentleman that is organizing this, and would just like to say a few more words. Rich? Thank you very much for this. Pro Thank you very much for this proclamation and support of Liv Livestrong Day at Wheat Ridge Cyclery. As was mentioned, this day is dedicated to cancer survivors and anyone affected by cancer. As you know, cancer is a, is a horrific, indiscriminate disease that will be contacted by 40% of the people in this room. But all of you will likely be impacted in some way because family members or friends will be involved with the disease in some fashion. I am a cancer survivor, and Ron's family has been significantly impacted by cancer as well. 
When you are told by a doctor that you have this disease, you can't help but wondering, how long do I have to live? It's a sobering thought. Live Strong Day is our way of demonstrating a strong commitment to fight the disease and let cancer, cancer survivors know we care. The Lance Armstrong Foundation and the message of Live Strong epitomizes the views that we all have regarding our fight against cancer. The message is based on three key principles. One, unity is strength, knowledge is power, and attitude is everything. As mentioned on March 27th, Wheat Ridge Cyclery friends, customers, cyclists, and those supporting the Live Strong message will unite for a day of support. The benefits range from raising awareness of the Live Strong message, honoring a family member or friend struck by the disease, and making a donation to the Lance Armstrong Foundation. If you or anyone needs help because they have been affected by cancer, you can call the Live Strong Survivor Care or you can go online to livestrong.org, and it's free. Thank you very much. Our next proclamation is National Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Week. I know this is um, near and dear to Mrs. Weaver's heart. That's March 8th through March 12th, 2010. Whereas multiple sclerosis is a disease that affects the central nervous system by disrupting the flow of information from the brain to the body. And whereas symptoms vary from person to person depending on where the central nervous system is affected, making it hard to diagnose. And whereas MS generally strikes in the prime of life, ages 20 to 50, and 73% of those diagnosed are women. And whereas one in every 540 Coloradoans has MS with over 9,500 people living with the disease in our state, impacting more than 72,000 people. And whereas the cause of and cure for MS remain elusive, significant progress has been made during the past five decades, thanks to the commitment of many dedicated people and the strong support of Coloradoans. And whereas new treatments and advances in research are giving new hope to people affected by the disease. The Colorado chapter contributes to the National MS Society nearly $50 million annual research budget. Whereas the National MS Society is a collective of passionate individuals who want to do something about MS now, to move together toward a world free of multiple sclerosis. Therefore, I, Mayor Jerry DiTullio, do hereby proclaim March 8th through the 12th, 2010, Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Week in the city of Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Done and resolved this eighth day of March, 2010. Since my diagnosis two years ago, the one thing I would like to share with others afflicted with, the, with this disease is diet. In my opinion, it is one of the most important factors, yet no one really mentions it beyond eat a sensible diet. I don't think most people really know what that means. I would like to share an unconventional, unconventional diet approach that I am currently trying and researching. I am passing this on strictly as food for thought and something that I am personally interested in. This past year, I came across some information on eating for your blood type. I never heard of such a thing, but I am trying it, and so far it makes good sense. Feed your body the food most adaptable, and in turn, it might function more efficiently. Wow, what a concept. In closing, I believe everyone must really act as their own advocate and find out what things you benefit from the most. It is a game of trial and error, but one I feel is worth every minute. Thank you. Uh, Karen Thaler has been representing the city of Wheat Ridge for the last four years, including this year as Mrs. Wheat Ridge, and that's for the 2010. She'll be representing Wheat Ridge in the Colora Miss Colorado pageant. Uh, candidates are selected by, Mrs. by the Miss Colorado, Mrs. Colorado pageant director for their community involvement and leadership. Over the past four years, Karen's community involvement consists of many activities, including reading our proclamations at city council meetings, actively participating with the Walk and Watch program in conjunction with the Wheat Ridge Police Department, attends local business functions and ribbon cuttings with the mayor's office and city council members, and she's been a prior Carnation Festival committee in the past. 
She's also a major advocate for multiple sclerosis awareness. It's with great pleasure that we help sponsor Mrs. Weaverich with a $250 check from the mayor's public outreach budget. Good luck in the Colorado pageant this 2010. So congratulations. First of all, I would like to thank Mayor DiTulio for sponsoring me this year. I would also like to thank City Council for approving the annual budget, allowing charitable contributions such as this to be made possible. In addition to representing Wheat Ridge at this year's Mrs. Colorado pageant, I am dedicating a program ad page showcasing our fine city. Contestants are encouraged to come up with creative ads, and I have chosen a special place in Wheat Ridge for mine. In honor of Council Member Stites' request to find it and buy it in Wheat Ridge, a talented local photographer is being used to capture the moment. In closing, I want to thank you, Mayor Tulio, once again for your generous support. It is very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. As a citizen of Wee Ridge or a business owner, if you'd like to help sponsor Mrs. Wee Ridge this year for the Miss Colorado pageant, please contact the mayor's office at 303-235-2815, and she can give you the information. Janice Mothers can give you the information to contact Ms. Thaler. So thank you. The next item on the agenda is Citizens' Right to Speak. Citizens' Right to Speak is reserved for members of the public who wish to speak on any item not on the agenda. Speakers are allowed three minutes. Others may donate their time to the speaker at the podium for a total of nine minutes. When you are speaking at the podium, you will see a green light when you start speaking, a yellow light when you have 30 seconds left, and a red light when your time is up. So please step forward for public comment if you'd like to speak on something not on the agenda tonight. And please state your name and spell your last name for the record and your city or your address. Stephen Gillespie, 3880 Upham Street. The police play your last name for the record. G I L L E S P as in Patrick, I E. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, guests in attendance, and our viewers from home, I just want to give you an update on the district special election that's going to be conducted on May 4, 2008, and the Mill Levy Tabor question associated with such election. There seems to be some confusion going on in the community. The first thing is the election is to fill three vacancies on the district board of directors seat. And the Tabor question is to ask our constituents to consider a, a mill levy adjustment to support fire department operations. This is not going to be a polling place election. It is going to be a mail out ballot. As such, ballots will be mailed out to all of our constituents that reside within the Wheat Ridge Fire Protection District, and then those ballots are to be returned via mail or drop-off at the designated election official's office located at 3880 Upham Street. If anybody has any questions, as always, they can feel free to call the district offices at 303-403-5900 or visit us on the web at www.wrfire.org for all the information. Also, in conjunction with the special election and the mill levy question, the professional firefighters of Wheat Ridge will be conducting a door-to-door -door campaign starting May, oh, excuse me, March 20th, 2008, for the six Saturdays preceding the actual election date of May 4th. This is to get information out on, number one, that the election is occurring on two different issues, to fill the three vacancies on the district board of directors and the Tabor questions. Our firefighters will be recognizable because the professional firefighters of Wheat Ridge have generated a special red T-shirt that uh, recognizes them as members of the issue committee, which will be working in tandem with the district to inform our constituents of this effort. So if anybody sees any firefighters six weeks in advance coming to their doors passing out literature, it is legitimate. You know, please don't bog down Chief Brennan and the police department. They are uh, on official issue committee business. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have anybody else for public comment before we move on to the regular agenda? 
Seeing none, we'll uh, move on to uh, approval of the agenda. Are there any changes tonight to the agenda as published? Um, seeing none, the agenda will pub stay, uh, stand as published. The next item on the agenda is public hearings and ordinances on second reading. The order of testimony will be city staff, the applicant, if applicable, and then the public followed by council discussion and questions. Please keep all comments germane to the issue. Uh, this is a city council business meeting and not a pep rally, so please no cheering, clapping, or impugning of motives or booing. Please treat all speakers as you would like to be treated. The next item on the agenda is Council Bill 02-2010. I'm going to open the public hearing. Council Member Langworthy. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Council Bill number 02-2010, an ordinance amending the planned industrial development outline development plan to allow an additional use for property located at approximately 5250 Oak Street. Case number WZ-09-09, Arvada Fire Protection District. The applicant is requesting approval of an amendment to a planned industrial development outline development plan for property located at approximately 5250 Oak Street to allow an additional use of the property. The proposed additional use is a public fire station. This case is being processed with a non-specific ODP which establishes permitted land uses and development standards. A future specific ODP will be required with additional public hearings in front of the Planning Commission and City Council. The Planning Commission recommended approval of this request at a public hearing held on January 21st, 2010. Is an ordinance number? The City Clerk, please assign an ordinance number. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Council, uh, Council Bill 02-2010 will be assigned ordinance number 1458. Uh, thank you. Before we move on, uh, Councilmember DeMott needs to declare an ex parte contact. Yes, I do. <clears throat> Being that this matter is only 400 feet from my home, I've had several instances of ex parte contact concerning the matter in question. Uh, most importantly, I must recuse myself at this time from this hearing and from the vote concerning it. Thank you to the mayor and council for their understanding for the mistakes of a new council member, and I apologize for the disruption. Thank you. Mr. Dahl, do you have any comments? Uh, council member DeMott and I spoke about this and he's, uh, uh, taking the proper action where there have been some ex parte contacts and, um, um, uh, I fully support what, uh, what he's doing and he'll just be out for this one agenda item and come back after we're done. Thank you. I need to swear anybody in who's going to speak on this agenda item. So if you're planning on speaking on item number one, please stand and raise your right hand and I will swear you in. Staff included. Do you swear to tell the truth in this matter? Please say I do. Thank you. We'll move on to the staff presentation. Did you say I do, Ms. Meredith? I did. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. For the record, Meredith Record, Weaverage Community Development Department. Um, okay. Case number WZ0909, Skyline Estates number three, re request for approval of an amendment to a PID uh, outline development plan at approximately 5250 Oak Street. Uh, applicant is Arvada Fire Protection District. I'd like to enter into the record the comprehensive plan, the zoning ordinance, case file and packet materials, and the contents of this digital presentation. Uh, this property is within the city of Wheat Ridge, and all proper posting notice, noticing has been met. Therefore, council does have jurisdiction to hear this case. Okay, this is a portion of the city zoning map. The property in question is this little purple area right down here, and it was rezoned as part of a larger tract, which actually extended from Ridge Road up to 53rd Avenue in 2003. Um, the entire parcel contained about 17 acres and um, is located directly to the south of the first filing of Skyline Estates and the second filing of Skyline Estates over on the west side, both of which are located within the city of Arvada. This is an aerial photo of the property. Again, it is outlined in red and you can see the surrounding street system and the development pattern in the area. To the south side is Ridge Road. We've got Oak Street over on the west, and then 53rd Avenue on the north. 
Again, it was zoned, platted, and had an FDP approval for the site, which ended up creating 38 lots, 37 of which were used for single-family development and one used for industrial purposes. The industrial portion is this area down here, which included the subject site and Tract H directly to the east, which was to serve as a stormwater conveyance retention, detention. The outline development plan established minimum perimeters for both the residential construction and the industrial construction. The residential FDP then established building elevations, and I would note that, as you can see in the picture, all of the lots have currently been developed. The ODP document also established uses for the industrial portion. They were primarily taken from the city's C1 zone district code, which is a fairly open-ended commercial category, but there are also some industrial uses which were approved for the site, and those included things like greenhouses, office warehouse uses, screened outside storage, and minor assembly and manufacturing. The development standards for the industrial piece, of course, as typical, it's the zoning document, so we set all the development parameters, including a 20 percent landscape coverage required, 40 percent maximum building coverage, and a 35-foot height limitation. The remainder of the development standards then referred back to the zoning code and addressed lighting, signage, fencing, et cetera. I would make one notation that per that original outline development code, access to the subject site was limited to Oak Street. This is a portion of the original plat for the property. It does include the subject site, which is pointed, I shall point to you right now. This is Tract H, and so this is the industrial portion of the overall plan development. The subdivision plat included dedications for all the surrounding street systems, including Oak Street over on the west side, 53rd Avenue on the north, Nelson Street over on the east side, and also included several drainage tracks, one of which you can see is this Tract H. There are also some conveyance channels, one of which runs along Oak, and then a major conveyance channel for the Columbine Basin local drainage system. Now let's go through some slides. This first one, I was standing at the intersection of Oak and Ridge Road looking east, excuse me, to the west. You can see this is some of the property that's located in the city of Arvada. Standing at that same location looking north, the subject property is off to the right-hand side. On the left is the city of Arvada. To the north is Wheat Ridge. This is some of the adjacent development to the east in Arvada. It is some sort of multi-unit apartment complex. Looks like it's got six or eight units in it. Now I'm standing kind of from the same vantage point looking to the northeast. All of these homes are located within the city of Wheat Ridge and are part of that original 38-unit subdivision. Now looking to the southeast, you can see across Ridge Road, you can see some of that existing office warehouse in these locations. If you look real hard in the back, this is Rocky Mountain Bottle. East along 53rd. Now looking back west along 53rd. I'm at the other end of the site now looking southwest towards the Nelson Street intersection with 53rd. Looking south towards Ridge Road, again, you can see that the adjacent industrial development on the south side of Ridge Road. And then finally looking to the east along Ridge, you can see that there are public improvements already in place, including curb gutter and sidewalk. This channelized structure right here is the portion for the Columbine Basin conveyance. Okay, this is the first page of the ODP document. Really what we did was we took the original for the zoning back in 2003 and we took all the residential components on it and just looked at this, the industrial piece. The intent of the ODP amendment tonight is to add one additional use, and that use is that of a fire station. 
Um, again, all the development standards that were originally approved, in, including the minimum setbacks, lot coverage, and so on and so forth, have remained the same. This is the second page of the development plan. Again, um, if you look over on the left-hand side, this little um, notation bubble right here has the additional use of a fire station included in it. This is sheet three, again, just showing the, some of the existing conditions surrounding the property where the work will occur. And this is the fourth sheet of the plan set. Again, this is um, a concept plan. Uh, if they get approved tonight, their next step would be to come back with a specific uh, site plan, including architectural elevations. And so if it's approved, you will be seeing this again. Um, again, uh, just looking at what they're showing with the conceptual site plan and my analysis of it is they do meet all the standards that were set up in the original zone change uh, ODP document. Um, one thing that was a discussion point at Planning Commission was the access to Oak Street. If you look at this site plan, 53rd Avenue is up on the north, Oak Street is to the west, and then Ridge on the south. They are showing their entrance and exit from Oak Street. And um, staff does the support this access rather than Ridge Road for a variety of reasons. First of all, it was established um, on the ODP document as a zoning condition based on a traffic impact analysis. Uh, secondly, it's typically undesirable from a traffic management standpoint to have direct access onto a collector street. We'd rather have them go onto the local street, which then intersects with the collector. Finally, we believe uh, from the staff perspective that the cost of bridging the Columbine Basin is probably um, a, a, a great deal of expense versus coming out onto Oak. And the fire district is satisfied with access onto Oak Street. All of the appropriate agencies can serve the property, including Arvada Fire Protection District. Valley Water will require loop water lines and main lines, hydrants, and so on. Both Quest and XL Energy have no problem with the development. Public Works will require a traffic analysis and preliminary drainage uh, report at the time of the specific ODP. There was a neighborhood meeting held on August 19th with uh, about nine folks in attendance with a lot of discussion about the proposed use and design, generally people seem satisfied um, versus the potential industrial development that could occur on the property. Because this is considered a zone change, because we're adding uses in, we do have to take a look at the evaluation criteria that's laid out in the zoning code and we've drawn the following conclusions. First of all, we believe that there are changed conditions due to the development on three sides, that would be on the north, east, and west, and the future construction of the Gold Line uh, Transit Line, which will begin construction in 2016. Um, even though uh, the, the proposed use isn't consistent, or not, not as consistent with the, um, the designation on the uh, comp plan structure plan, we do believe that it meets several of the other goals and objectives identified in uh, the comp plan as well as the NRS. We believe that the proposed use is less impactive than what would be allowed under the PID, that the proposed use will serve as a transition and a buffer from the industrial area to the south into the neighborhood. All public infrastructure is currently in place and that we believe there would be a positive impact on the health, safety, and welfare due to better fire protection for the area that traffic impacts, drainage, and design will be assessed at the specific ODP stage, and finally that uh, cl compliance with the architectural and site design manual will be assessed again at the specific ODP stage. Planning Commission did review this uh, request uh, at a public hearing held on January 21st. There were no speakers in opposition, and they did uh, recommend approval with the following conditions. First, that a preliminary drainage report submitted, be submitted at the time of specific ODP, and that a traffic analysis uh, be submitted as well at the time of ODP. And th that is our recommendation, those same conditions, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Move on to the applicant. Please step forward and display your last name for the record and your address. John Greer, G-R-E-E-R. Fire Chief with our Rata Fire Protection District, 7903 Allison Way. Thank you. 
Um, I thought I'd just talk about one. I don't know if a lot of people know why our Vada fires here talking to the uh, city of Wheat Ridge Council. We do protect um, all of the uh, area within the city that's north of the Clear Creek and have since the early 1900s. Uh, the main reason for that is in the early 1900s it was harder to get across the creek and that's where the boundaries were established. And so we protected it ever since. Um, this site moves us to about a mile closer to the busiest part of our fire district. I-70 and Kipling corridor um, is the busiest um, corridor within our district. Um, we have hotels, the interstate, it goes all the way down to 44th and this will move us about a mile closer to that site. Um, and I'm being brief and we'll get through this for you, but the uh, station design, I think you guys will be very pleased if you'd like to see them life size. We built two of them just like this at 64th and Quaker and 80th and Alkire. Um, they're beautiful firehouses. And um, other than that, I'm like I said, I'm trying to be brief. I'll answer any questions that you have. Thank you. And that was my instructions, keep oh. them brief. So, <laughs> so. Any uh, questions? We'll move on to public comment, and then we'll come back for okay. council questions. Do we have any of the public who would like to speak on item number one on the fire station? Please step forward now from the public. <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to council discussion or comments. Do we have any comments or questions from city council? Mr. Reinhardt. Um, <clears throat> um, Meredith, how... how uh, do the design guidelines that we have actually impact what are, what are the standards that would apply to this? Um, I mean, I know it comes in the next phase, but what, what is the design guidelines that apply to this site? Well, um, they actually not only have to meet the ODP standards that were established, which includes the 20, at least 20 percent landscaping, uh, living within the 35 foot height limitation and the setbacks that were set up by the ODP. Um, but also they have to meet the architectural and site design manual, which includes um, changes in materials, articulation of the facades, interesting roof lines. But the, but the fact that the building is, is not a residential use uh, doesn't create any kind of no. lack of it does structure not. for that? Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councilmember Barry? Sorry. Meredith, could you explain in a little more detail um, why you feel this use is less impactive than um, all the uses in a lot right. of other? Well, originally when, um, as I indicated um, at the beginning of the presentation, um, the properties on two sides, which were in Arvada, the filing three, which is up to, or filing one, which is up to the north, and then filing two of the Skyline Estates, um, were already zoned and platted uh, when this parcel came in. Originally, this piece, which is the southern piece in Arvada, was zoned industrial. So when this, the piece in Wheat Ridge came in, we thought, well, we'll, we'll reflect it. We did not show industrial on the zoning doc or, or on our comprehensive plan, but we wanted to respect Arvada, kind of Arvada's pattern and be consistent with them. And since they were showing this piece as industrial, we thought maybe it made sense to do this too. Well, lo and behold, a couple years later, they come in and rezone it to residential. So now all of a sudden we've got this industrial piece. It's going to have, going to have residential on three sides. And some of the uses, quite honestly, outdoor storage, office warehouse, a lot of truck traffic. I know there are impacts related to the fire station, but um, they have some internal policies that helps mini minimize those to the residential neighborhood. Um, it's got, the, the site also has some interesting development constraints with drainage easements along the west and then this big channel across the south. And we think it makes sense from a land use transition to try to buffer the, these folks instead of move the industrial um, development closer. Do we have any other questions or comments before I close the public hearing? Councilmember Adams. Um, for the applicant, I can't find it now, but I believe I read in here that this is not immediately on the docket, that it, you're not ready to build yet. Well, uh, that was true at the time we put it in, but the district board has decided to move ahead with it. Uh, we were able to arrange financing, construction costs are way down to where it made it to where we felt we needed to do it now and not miss that opportunity. So they're ready to move on this uh, as soon as we get it approved. So, 
Okay. And I believe, um, Meredith, this is probably what Karen was asking in that I, it says here the proposed use will have less of an impact than existing uses and that then later on you're going to look at the um, require a traffic analysis. And so those two things will happen. Is that correct? Correct. So, because mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out how that would be the case, but we have one more go round. Well, we'll it, um, <laughs> there, the numbers they provided at Planning Commission, I can't remember. Chief Greer, how many fire calls do you do a, a day? Two. This station will run three to four a day. It'll run about oh. 120 a month. Which would be significantly less than an office warehouse type of um, development. Okay, that was my only concern. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing and a motion's in order. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve Council Bill Number 02-2010, Case Number WZ-09-09, a request for approval of an amendment to a planned industrial development outline development plan to allow the additional use of a public fire station on property located at approximately 5250 Oak Street on second reading and that it take effect 15 days after publication for the following reasons. One, the proposed use will have less of an impact than existing uses allowed on the property. The proposed use will provide a buffer and land use transition from the industrial uses on the south side of Ridge Road to the residential neighborhood to the north. Number three, the evaluation criteria supports approval of the request with the following conditions. One, a preliminary drainage report will be submitted at the time of specific ODP. And number two, a traffic analysis will be submitted at the time of specific ODP. Is there a second? I second. second. We have a motion for approval, second by Council Member Sangs and Jay. Discussion? Mr. Stites? Yeah, if this passes, I'd just like to welcome you to Wheat Ridge. And I think it's great anytime from somebody from Arvada wants to build in Wheat Ridge. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Do, do we collect use taxes on, on their construction costs? Please call the Council. <laughs> Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. I would ask that the placards be pleased to taken down. And, and Meredith, do we need the screen for the next item? Could you please raise the screen? Would somebody please invite Mr. DeMott to please come and join us? Item two is Council Bill 03-2010. I'm going to open the public hearing. Council Member Jay. Council Bill number 03-2010, an ordinance extending the moratorium enacted by Section 2 of Ordinance 1453, Series 2009, on the submission, acceptance, processing, and approval of any application for a City of Wheat Ridge permit or license related to the operation of a business or cooperative that sells or cultivates medical marijuana pursuant to the authority granted, granted by Article 18, Section 14 of the Colorado Constitution. Issue on September 14, 2009, Council adopted Ordinance 1453, Series 2009, which enacted a 90-day moratorium on the issuance or consideration of any city license or permit concerning medical marijuana dispensaries. On November 23, 2009, Council adapted Ordinance 1457, which extended the moratorium for an additional 90 days. The moratorium, moratorium is set to expire on March 13, 2010. One purpose for extending the moratorium was to allow the state's position concerning regulations of medical marijuana dispensaries to develop since such regulations could limit the city's ability to regulate these operations. The state has not yet adopted any regulation concerning medical marijuana dispensaries through at least one bill, although at least one bill is pending before the Colorado General Assembly. 
The current legislative session is scheduled to end on May 12, 2010. The attached ordinance will extend the moratorium until July 13, 2010. This will provide sufficient time for the state to finalize its regulatory position and allow council to consider adopting appropriate regulations for implementation of the city in the city that are consistent with state law. Is the motion in order? No, we're in a public hearing. Oh. So uh, will the city clerk please assign an ordinance number? Oh. Yes, council bill 03-2010 will be assigned ordinance number 1459. Oh, thank you. We'll move on to the staff presentation. I'm the staff presentation. For the record, Gerald Dahl, City Attorney. Uh, I think that Council Member Jay read the appropriate summary and gives you a picture of where uh, this is at now. There are two bills still pending in the legislature, and, and you probably read about them in the paper. They continue to change considerably. And as I look at their contents, and obviously they've not been adopted yet, but their, their contents, uh, there is, I think, a high probability that it will affect or at very minimum be very useful to the council in knowing what the state position is for the council itself uh, takes its action to regulate locally because the shape and size of what's going to be available locally to regulate I think really will change under the state legislation. So um, staff recommends that you do adopt the uh, ordinance extending the moratorium to July 13, 2010. The legislative session ends in late May, early June, depends every year. So this will give us time to... Um, be able to react to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to public comment. Uh, please step forward. You'd like to speak on item number two, Council Bill 20-10, Medical Marijuana Ordinance, the moratorium. Please step forward to the podium and spell your last name for the record and your city and or your address. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, my name is Scott McKinley. Uh, my address is 10107 West 37th Place. Um, and if you'd like me to spell my last name for you, I will. It's M-C capital K-I-N-D-L-E-Y. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the city council has quite a, oh, I'm sorry. The city council has quite a task here um, with this ordinance. I, I say that I do support extending this ordinance until the July time frame. Um, we are the owners of one of the dispensaries in Wheat Ridge. And one of my purposes here tonight, besides to show support for this uh, extension of this ordinance, is to offer our help to you. Um, you, you have a daunting task in front of you with the things that are going on within the state and to get uh, your ordinance in with Wheat Ridge. Um, I wish you the best of luck with it, and I would also like to offer our help um, to help further educate you on the, the, the medical marijuana industry and, and the goods and the bads. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for, for listening to me. Um, have a good evening. Thank you. Please step forward if you'd like to make any more comments on item number two. Seeing none from the public, we'll move on to council discussion and comments. Do we have any comments or discussion from city council? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and the motion's in order. I move to adopt council bill number 032010 on second reading and that it will take effect upon adoption. We have a motion for approval, second by Council Member Sang. Discussion on the main motion? Please poll the Council. Motion, <clears throat> excuse me. Motion carries six to two with Council Members DeMott and Reinhardt voting no. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is decisions, resolutions, and motions. Item three is resolution 14-2010, Council Member Stites. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce resolution number 14-2010, a resolution authorizing the re renaming of the Wheat Ridge Senior Community Center to the Wheat Ridge Active Adult Center. The Senior Advisory Committee and city staff have been exploring possible, possible new names to more accurately reflect the programming offered 
and the seniors that participate at the center. An extensive process which included a focus group with younger seniors and current users, meetings with the Senior Community Center Advisory Committee, and numerous brainstorming meetings with the staff has resulted in the request to rename the center. The new name that is being recommended by the committee and staff is Wheat Ridge Active Adult Center. Is a motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to approve resolution number 142010, authorizing the renaming of the Wheat Ridge Senior Community Center to the Wheat Ridge Active Adult Center. Is there a second? We have a motion for approval, second by Councilmember Langworthy. Discussion on the main motion? Please pull the council. Motion carries eight to zero. Thank you. Item four, Council Member DeMott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, motion to approve the ratification of the mayoral appointment to the Wheat Ridge Foundation. The Wheat Ridge Foundation nominates candidates to the mayor for appointments or reappointment to the foundation, and the mayoral appointments are then ratified by the city council. Mayor DiTulio has asked that Floyd Sasa be appointed to the Wheat Ridge Foundation, term to expire March 2nd, 2012. Is the motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to ratify, ratify the mayoral appointment of Floyd Sasa to the Wheat Ridge Foundation, term to expire March 2nd, 2012. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion for approval, second by Council Members Langworthy and I believe Adams. Please call the council. Motion carries eight to zero. Thank you. Item five, Councilmember DeMott. A motion to approve a $40,000 contribution to the Wheat Ridge Business District for the person, purpose of funding the revitalization incentive grant program. Is motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to approve a $40,000 contribution to the Wheat Ridge Business District for the purpose of funding the Revitalization Incentive Grant Program. Second. We have a motion for approval of the $40,000, seconded by Councilmember Stites. Discussion? Please pull the council. Motion carries 8 to 0. Um, thank you. Item 6, Councilmember Reinhardt. There, we had no items pending that required the action of City Council for the March 22 session, so um, we'd like to move to cancel that, that meeting. Is the motion in order? Motion's in order. I move to cancel the City Council meeting scheduled for March 22, 2010. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to cancel the March 22 meeting, seconded by Councilmember Langworthy. Discussion? Please pull the Council. Motion carries seven to one with council members, uh, council member Stites voting no. Thank you. That concludes our agenda for tonight. We'll move on to city manager's matters. I have nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. City attorney's matters? Not for me tonight. Thanks. City clerk's matters? I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Council member Sang? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Uh, council member DeMott? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Councilmember Jay? I always like to say something. Um, first of all, that the fire department is going to locate there. I think that that is, after speaking to the planning department, that that is the best use for that property. And it also provides um, protection for the industrial area that's close by as well as the homes. Councilmember Reinhardt? Nothing tonight. Uh, Councilmember Stites? Yeah, you betcha. Um, I brought it up before, but this is a great time to relocate to Wheat Ridge, uh, whether it be uh, business or personal family or whatever. And if you need assistance, please contact the staff. Uh, also, I ask you to do a positive thing for your community, either your family, uh, watch your neighbors, check your neighbors. And as always, please try to find it and buy it in Wheat Ridge. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Langworthy? Nothing. Thank you. Councilmember Adams? Thank you. Um, Randy, uh, Ken left. Do you know if we're still having that 38th Avenue meeting Wednesday night on the 38th Avenue? On the 24th, I think it is. is that one? It's not this Wednesday, then. I think it's the following Wednesday, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. Council Member Barry. Yes, thank you. Um, in the boards and commissions appointment this year, we had a, a really um, wonderful selection of candidates in District 1. And during the initial round, we, we were unable to appoint all of them. And we do have some additional um, appoint or vacancies that have come up. And we hope to uh, appoint some additional members here soon. And um, it was great to see we had a great list of candidates and many new folks who have moved into the community and want to get involved right away. And so um, that was a great thing. And uh, we hope to continue that. Oh, thank you. Um, I need to address a few comments that were made at the last city council meeting, and probably since about Thanksgiving. I've been sort of out of sorts with my mom and her passing on December 3rd. And to chair a meeting, it's uh, difficult enough, but when you're out of sorts and you have side chatter going on and things going on within the, the dais or at the study session, we all need to work together to kind of make this work. And um, I'm asking for the council's help. But I, want, I have a couple of memos here I want to go over tonight and read to the city council about public comment and a few other things. Um, here's uh, five copies here for the side. Please give the uh, clerk a copy for the record. Uh, I wanted to address some things about um, public comment. Now, we had a speaker last meeting who uh, did get a little animated and uh, was asking council questions about information that um, in our council rules isn't really addressed. And I did talk to the speaker after the meeting, and I called him and I said, you have three minutes playing 20 questions on the, um, with the council. It probably doesn't work because you got three minutes. I said, coming around the podium and uh, addressing the council at the dais is also a no-no because it looks like it's a threatening move. So I think the speaker understands what he, d what he did wrong and also that what um, probably I did wrong. But I wanted to just basically address this memo, read it to council, and address some things that are in the council rules right now or not in the council rules. Um, I wanted to clarify some issues that have recently arisen with regards to public comment at a city council meetings. Uh, council rules are very clear about, censoring, about not censoring the public. And item four of the council rules says citizens rights says there shall be no restriction on the number of citizens who wish to speak. And item five says the content of any speaker's comments cannot be censored. Uh, speakers do not have the right, speakers do have the right to publicly address the government with their grievances based on the First Amendment, freedom of speech, and not to be censured. However, as chair, I am going to gavel, interrupt, or stop a speaker under public comment if the speaker is cursing or they verbally and or physically threaten the public or elected officials or staff. Uh, on more than one occasion, including the February 22nd council meeting, I have asked for a uniformed officer to be present based on mitigating circumstances. And we did have an officer that the last meeting. Um, there is nothing in the city charter or the council rules which precludes elected officials from responding to speakers under public comment. Now, on occasion, the city attorney has advised that elected officials not respond to certain speakers who are involved in legal or potential legal issues with the city. Uh, individual members of council or the mayor have the following options available under public comment with regards to addressing the speaker. And I wanted to clarify that I've, I've ran this memo by the city attorney. And the things that you're going to hear that are available to you have happened in the past when I was on city council and as mayor. And you could respond to a public speaker under public comment. You do not respond. You can have staff to respond. Uh, you can make a motion. That's happened in the past where a, a citizen came in and council made a motion. Uh, you can call for a break if there's a problem. And other options is documented or parliamentary procedures. Um, parliamentary procedure and councils are very clear about impugning others' motives. Uh, speakers shall confine themselves to the question or discussion. All discussion must be germane to the agenda item. Members of council shall avoid personal attacks, refrain from imputing the motives of any other member's argument or vote. Now, this is where it comes in for me as chair. Um, I have to be watching and see what's going on, and that's why I need your help as far as if, we're, if people are talking on the side and, and calling for other issues, it gets difficult to manage the meeting at a study session or, or a council meeting. The chairman shall preserve order and decorum, prevent personal attacks or the impugning of members' motives, confine members in debate to questions under discussion, be responsible for conducting meetings in an orderly manner, ensure that the majority opinion may be expressed and that the majority be allowed to rule. And then lastly, the chairman shall determine all points of order subject to the rights of any council member to appeal to the council. And what that basically is saying is, uh, let's say council member A calls a point of order, um, I rule and they don't like that ruling, then they could actually say to the council, I make a motion to override the mayor's ruling. And then that's just a regular vote of city council. 
and it could pass or fail to override the, the, the chair's ruling. Um, on, one, on one or more occasion, I have gaveled or an elected official if they have impugned the motives, argument, or vote of other elected officials, and I'll continue to do so. Elected officials on the dais are generally held to a higher standard than the speaker under public comment. I hope this memo clarifies what may happen under public comment and how I as chair will be conducting, continuing to proceed in the future. Now, that's unless council changes the rules and you say something different about public comment, whether you want to address somebody or not. Now, what I've told the speaker and other speakers, you have three minutes. It really doesn't behoove them to start asking a bunch of questions when they have three minutes left. If council doesn't answer or there's a long-winded answer, they're going to lose their three minutes and they're done. So um, I hope this memo clarifies what may happen under public comment and how I as chair will be continuing to proceed in the future. Please feel free to contact me with any questions. And so I'm just trying to make a clarification here that right now there is no rule saying what you can and cannot do. And so some council members I've talked to said they don't want to respond under public comment. Some said they do want to respond and get it out of the way. So that was just a FYI for council on that issue. And like I said, I need some help where um, comments aren't made that are necessarily not correct or if there's chatter on the side and that's distracting me where I'm going on, I, I can guarantee that I have asked for the police to be here on occasion and I'm watching with them if we have a speaker who's out of control or uh, when the speaker came around the podium last time, the police was watching him and I asked him to go back to the podium and um, make his comment from the podium because safety is our number one concern for everybody in the room, the public and the council and the staff. Um, the last, the other thing I wanted to, to bring up was uh, there was some comments about uh, public outreach money. And so in an effort to be transparent and open like I've always tried to be, uh, I wanted to pass out to the council the 2009 uh, public outreach money. As you know, the mayor has a $3,000 budget, which is approved by city council. Uh, what happens under that budget is that um, we may get a letter from a constituent or a business asking for information about the public outreach. It's $3,000 max for the entire year. So we have to be somewhat selective and frugal. This memo that I'm passing out to you is the 2009 public outreach, which also contains the um, information from all of the, the, the businesses or the citizens who asked for a donation from the mayor's office. And what happens is that letter comes in and Janice, some others and I will review that request and make a decision based on their request. And just wanted to go over quickly what uh, was uh, donated in 2009. Like I said, the budget, the total budget for the year is $3,000. Uh, the Weaver High School girls basketball program asked for a donation. They were given $250 at the request of their booster club. Uh, the American Cancer Society Relay of Life, $250. Uh, former Mayor Gretchen Cerverney had a Centurion event, which is anybody who has had a um, birthday of 100, and she asked for the, the mayor's office to sponsor the centerpiece. That was $75.32. The Table Mountain Animal Shelter, $500. The Weaver Foundation Carnation Festival, that was $500. Uh, the Weaver Farmers 5000, which is an event held by the high school, they were, we contributed $1,000 to that event. That covers high school expenses for the entire school. Um, the Optimus Pancake Supper at Weaver High School was $200, $210. And then we did a, a, a robocall to the citizens of Wheat Ridge about the rebate, and that was $114.15. Uh, and I feel very comfortable with these donations, talking to my constituents during the 2009 election, talking to the public. They see no problem with these contributions. Uh, there may be individual contributions that people will not support or support, but it, it's a um, issue where the public talking to me feels that it's a good use of the money because we want to keep the money in the city of Wheat Ridge for Wheat Ridge organizations. Um, now for 2010 so far, the budget is $3,000. The Wheat Ridge High School newspaper, and you'll see that letter in the, in the packet was asked for a donation. They were given $1,000 based on their request because they're reorganizing that uh, newspaper at the, at the high school. And then tonight we gave Mrs. Weebridge a sponsor of $250, leaving a balance so far of $1,250 for the entire year to actually um, support any other organizations. The other thing I wanted to mention is that's a $3,000 public outreach budget. Now, the mayor's office, along with council members, also has a meeting budget of $3,000. And um, there's two organizations that the mayor's office is a member of, the Weebridge Optimist and the Reetmidge um, Rotarians. Uh, we are not members as mayor of that organization to go to their breakfast and lunches and hear their speakers. We are members of that organization because they support the community in a lot of ways, and that funding actually helps them support the entire program. Uh, just to briefly list what the Optimist and the Rotary do, they support the Weaver High School, the middle school, and the grade schools on reading programs. 
They support the RSA awards and scholarships for students going to Red Rocks, and that's money who have gone through adversity in their life. And that money comes from the Rotary and the Optimist, all the service clubs. And of course, Councilmember Langworthy and the police chief know about that because they also worked on the Pennington project for um, food bank. Um, they've supported the Weaver Ridge, High, Weaver Ridge uh, Rec Center. They donated three, thirty-three thousand dollars back in two thousand. And that money was used to expand that ballroom, and then they were they were they paid back the city over a five-year term or three-year term. Uh, in the past, they've supported the Weaver High School Fields of Green, the Pennington Grade School Food Bank, and also they have Christmas and Thanksgiving food baskets. Once again, talking to the constituents in, in my in this community and my constituents, they support these pro projects because they're in the city of Weaver Ridge, and they also support we would businesses and we would uh, citizens. Um, these will be posted on this, on this website for the uh, city of Weed Ridge and also my personal website at dirtyatula.com because I am proud of the fact what I've done the last four years as mayor and I'm continue to do that the next four years. Now, the last thing I wanted to address is, you know, I ran, for with, I ran against Congressman Ed Perlmutter back in 1998 for the state senate. We have a pretty good political relationship and um, over the years, we've talked and talked about programs. But as mayor, we communicate with Con Congressman Promoter on a regular basis to make sure we're getting our funds for road projects. And so I asked them to um, send me an email of what they believe we would, uh, issues are when it comes to road projects and funding. And so I talked to Melanie Keene, who is a, a supporter and a worker at the um, Congressman Ed Promoter's office. And this is the email that we got back, and I'd like to read this to you, Council because it does address the uh, issue of what we're looking for funding, the National League of Cities, why we're going out there and to make sure that we're getting our fair share. That says, thank you, Mayor. Here are a couple of points to consider. Weed Ridge has submitted three tra transportation project requests, basically 17, 18 million for the I-70 and 32nd Avenue reconfiguration, I-70 and 32nd Avenue, 21, almost 22 million for I-70 and Kipling reconfiguration, and almost 9 million for the Wadsworth widening from 36th to 46th. Staff, congressmen, both in D.C. and the district office, continues to be in contact with city staff and representatives regarding ongoing and developing projects, as recently as this week, and that's re uh, referring to some council members who have contacted them, plus the mayor's office is in continual contact with them to make sure that we're on their radar screen. Um, and we always keep the congressman in the loop on changes and progress. I want to thank staff, too, Rand. I know Public Works is always having me sign the, the proper appropriate documentation for the grants and for the stimulus money. Um, Ed meets with every mayor and city council throughout the year in Colorado and continues to be supportive to every extent possible. And if the mayor's not here or if the congressman's not here, it's usually Jerry Pfeiffer. Um, cheaper and faster than a flight to D.C., we have found, is our teleconferencing system between our D.C. and district offices. We can schedule a virtual face-to-face -face meeting with the congressman or D.C. staff and are able to host attendees at our district office via the teleconference. Please utilize this service if it's of interest. So what I'll be doing is setting up a uh, t teleconference with Ed Perlmutter, but he's also here pretty much every weekend. If anybody from council wants to be that or staff, we'll set that up sometime in the, in the near future so we can actually talk to Congressman Perlmutter and uh, address some of the issues. In fact, if we're going to have a meeting with the NLC and we have uh, three council members going for training and education, we could actually schedule that meeting at the same time and we could have everybody watching that meeting with uh, our three NLC representatives and Patrick, who's going now, plus the rest of council and the mayor's office. Now, the last thing I wanted to address is CML. Um, I've gone to CML, which is the Colorado Municipal League, over the years off and on. Um, and I've taken my family along because they're important to me and it's a long trip. Now, the thing is, when my family goes, the lodging, well, the lodging is the same price, according to our representative, Janice Smothers, before one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, because of the conference and the, the lodges are offering the same prices. So the lodging isn't an issue. But the other thing is, is per diem. Whether I go or whether 20 people go, the per diem is the same per day. So the difference is made up by my, myself for the food and lodging. So I wanted to basically let, let everybody know that last year I was reimbursed for mileage for $110. Um, the conference and lodging was um, $510. The CML registration was 190 I got the per diem, but then I also gave back about 50 bucks because we went a day late to save money, and I didn't attend any of those expensive lunches that they have where the governor speaks. So um, I'm not going to go this year, 
but I think it's important for someone to be there representing the city of Weaver, even at CML, because the Carbon Municipal League has a lot of positive information for um, elected officials. But I'm not going to apologize for the fact that my family goes and stays there because for, for the simple fact is I'm paying for them for the food and everything else, and um, it's not an issue. And so I'm going to be public about it because I am not going to be put on the spot again by somebody after council meeting. You know, the thing is, I've been on the council and mayor for 14 years, and I enjoy it, and I'm going to enjoy it for the next four years because I enjoy what I'm doing, and that's where it's going to go. So what I'm asking you to do is if you have a problem with something or you want to accuse me of something, count to 10 before you do because I don't want to be accosted anymore, and it's been happening for the last four years, in the hallway after a meeting by an elected official. Call me the next day, call me a week from now, but I don't want to hear about it no more, and I'm tired of the accusations. Mr. We're adjourned. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, can I make one clarification to the question Councilmember Adams had earlier? There is a 38th Avenue mixed use forum uh, here at the Council Chambers at 6 o'clock on the 24th. That's Wednesday night, March 24th, 6 p.m. here at the Council Chambers. And again, it's one of our series of mixed use forms we're doing. This is in particular looking at the 38th Avenue corridor. So. I knew we didn't have a meeting, and I wanted to make sure that got out to the community. Right. Thank no. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We're All adjourned. Right. Bridge Channel 8, keeping you informed on events in your community.